Citizens, and thanks for tuning in to Nindy Nation episode 103. I'm Jeff, and if this is your first time here, welcome. Nindy Nation is your one stop weekly shop for everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch. Today, we'll take a look at every new indie game hitting the eShop from February 13th through the 20th. And after that, we'll mosey on down to the eShop deals to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. New episodes of Nindy Nation hit YouTube on Tuesdays, and the audio podcast feed is hosted by our friends at the Nintendo Village. On Thursdays, we stream brand new releases during Nindies at Night, and last week was a ton of fun with Binary Star Infinity, Ultra Goodness 2, and Blue Fire. You can see the replays if you missed it, and I hope you join us this Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern. For everything all in one place, follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation, and chat it up with other fine citizens in our Discord server. We've got a great week ahead for the new releases, and the deals are excellent, too. I can't wait to dig into those, but as you know, every week, some games just slip between the cracks, and we need to make sure everyone gets their moment in the spotlight. So to kick off episode 103, let's first take a look at the six neglected nindies and one embarrassing disaster from PixArts that released since episode 102. Smash Boats released last week by Smash House Games, and it says, Let's go smash. I wonder if it's set to the tune of Smash Mouth music. I hope not. Anyways, it's a game where boats have boxing gloves and try to punch each other out of various bodies of water. Kind of like the disc mini game in Smash Brothers for 3DS, but they made a multiplayer game out of it and, oh, wait, it's only single player? And it's 15 bucks? There is a demo, though, if you want to check it out. However, Smash Boats seems much more suited as a $2 game, if anything. Cubite released yet another puzzle game based on chess, but get this. They threw out the chessboard and built it more like a grid-based strategy game. Talk about a different take, huh? Knight's Retreat is still based on chess, so the rules are understandable enough, but it's structured like a level-based puzzle game. It's only two bucks, and it's one that I think I'm going to check out for myself. On Skull Development is back with yet another dark and dingy first-person escape room game, this one including such lovely settings as a psychotic circus tent and a torture chamber, and its name is Escape First 2. That's kind of given me a grammar aneurysm. A grammarism, if you will. Persephone is a cool little isometric puzzle game that was just ported from phones to the Switch by Momo Pie Game Studio. You move around a grid in trap-filled rooms with the shtick being that as a trap kills you, you're revived and then your dead body becomes a piece of the puzzle. Think like for blocking traps or walking over pits. It's 8 bucks and it's one that I played a bit of a couple of years ago and I had a good time with it back then. But if you're going to play any puzzle type game this week, I think you should consider Steamroll by Katniss Game and Antiquito Studio Binari, which launched for $9.99. It's set in a 3D steampunk world with aesthetics similar in style to the Steamworld series, and sees you as a scientist in a ball-shaped contraption that has all kinds of cannons and gadgets built into it. The puzzles are very intricate and will have you rolling around almost in a mini-golf fashion, lining up circuitry and building ramps. There's a narrative that's told throughout the levels too, and the whole game looks really good. For 10 bucks, I really like Steamroll. Nindy newcomers Patika Games bring their title called Stealth to the Switch, and it employs a minimalist art style to basically copy the Metal Gear Solid VR missions. It's hard to say if the execution of it is at the same level, but you're a little ball in a top-down world that maneuvers around areas avoiding vision cones from enemies while working towards the other end. It's seven bucks, and it seems like it'd be a good wish list title while we wait for a sale, but if you want... What's that? Oh, there's another game? Yep, 
PixArts is back with the single Nindy Nono from last week, and it is yet another asset flip where they take demos from a game engine and upload it to the eShop as if it were a real game. This one costs $4 more than the value of the souls of the team at PixArts and is called Free Throw Basketball. <laughs> I've recently realized that given how bad the phonetic spelling of their descriptions are, there's a really good chance that this group's name is actually Pig's Farts, and that would be much more fitting. Pretty good list, huh? Smash Boats could be fun, but it's missing multiplayer and a 90% discount. My pick is definitely Steamroll. What about you? Hit up the YouTube comments, Twitter, or Discord, and let's talk about it. This coming week is a little all over the place, and I gotta say, it's been a long time since I've been on the fence about so many of this week's releases. Nevertheless, we can figure it out together because there's still at least a couple of games that are easy recommendations, and a couple that we'll certainly have some fun with. These are the 20 new releases hitting the eShop from February 14th through the 20th. Developer Serenity Forge is best known for Neversong, or their visual novels like Where the Water Tastes Like Wine and Half Past Fate, and it's the latter that kicks off the week with a Valentine's Day-themed sequel. On February 14th, Half Past Fate Romantic Distancing releases, and if you can't tell, yes, it's a dating game set in, uh, modern times. With cute pixel art and great music, Romantic Distancing is a clever story about a couple who met just before the lockdown began and have to make it through the same daily routines as all of us while trying to keep their relationship afloat. The original Half Past Fate was very well received, and all signs point to this being another clever little romp through modern romance that releases for five bucks just in time for your own socially distanced Valentine's Day. On Tuesday the 16th, we get Hashtag Drive, which claims to be an action racing game inspired by, quote, road and action movies of the 70s, despite all of PM Studios' media using a DeLorean. The game seems like it was built entirely to just siphon money out of people from its life as a free-to-play 2019 iOS game. You just drive, pick up collectibles, and then have to refuel. If you're on mobile, that's where the microtransactions come in. If there is a goal here, I can't see it, and what is there certainly doesn't seem compelling enough to be worth $12.99. Also on the 16th is Brutal Rage by Two Bad Games for $6.99. Giggity giggity. It's just a side-scrolling beat-em-up with really unattractive pixel art that falls somewhere between the River City titles and Streets of Rage in terms of inspiration, but doesn't appear to execute on any level anywhere close to the troves of excellent beat-em-ups already available. It's been a while since we've had an NIS America game on Nindy Nation, and I'm always torn if we should cover these games, but all of you say you appreciate seeing them in the rundown, so today we'll cover another one. Actually, I really just want to cover the next entry in the Fallen Legion series because it's developed by Yummy Yummy Tummy, and I just really wanted an excuse to say that. The premise of these games are pretty cool. It's a JRPG with branching stories about a group of people who live in a floating castle because the world is covered in a dangerous miasma, which, by the way, is kind of similar to my theory on what Breath of the Wild 2 is about, just to throw that out there. These games mix turn-based combat with active button prompts alongside a narrative rife with relationships to build and choices to make. They've mostly been middle-of-the-road reviews-wise, like most NIS games, but if you're dying for a super nerdy RPG series to get into, you could do worse, and Fallen Legion Revenants even has a demo you can try before it launches on the 16th for $39.99. Idea Factory and Compile Heart love making anime games with big-breasted women who also happen to have animal features. They wrap up the releases on the 16th by taking just that, throwing a load of guns and jetpacks on said big-breasted furry girls, and sending them out to sea to battle historical battleships in Azure Lane Crosswave for $49.99. What the f*** did I just say? Okay, now we're getting somewhere. On the 17th, we get East Asia Soft's new release for the week, and I'm really starting to dig their whole approach. It seems like they swap on and off with publishing a bizarre, low-budget game like last week's Sanuka Attack, with retro-inspired action games like this week's Void Gore. This one is another from Panda Indie Studio, who released Null Drifter and Project Starship, 
and it's a simple but gritty, lo-fi, vertically scrolling bullet hell shooter where you are literally just shooting your way through hell. That's pretty much all there is to say about this one, but for $4.99, that's just fine with me. The Big Thursday Drop kicks off on the 18th with one of two games that fit the mold for Pick of the Week. Published by Elden Pixels of Alwa's Legacy and Awakening fame, if you've ever wanted to know how to talk dirty to me, the description for Cathedral by Decemberborn is a great place to start. My simplest explanation would be Shovel Knight but a Metroidvania. You wake up, a knight with no memory, in a gorgeous 8-bit world and set out on adventure. You'll find bosses, unlock secrets, use all kinds of knight-ish weaponry, and slowly fill out your trusty map as you get your knight on to the beat of some seriously great chiptunes. If Shovel Knight wasn't a thing, I'd say Cathedral blends the boss battles and platforming of Mega Man and DuckTales, yes, there's pogo bouncing, the open exploration of Super Metroid with elaborate secret-filled areas of Castlevania, and a general tone similar to Ghosts and Goblins. I don't know what else to say. It releases with a 20% discount at $11.99, and I'll be dropping everything to play Cathedral later this week. I'm very excited for this one and look forward to sharing more when we play it this Thursday on Nindies at Night. In 2013, a student-created game received praise for its homage to classic top-down action adventures, namely its inspiration from the Zelda Oracle of Ages and Seasons titles. That game was Anodyne, and it went on to see ports to every platform imaginable, making its way to the Switch in 2019, and has overall seen generally favorable reviews. While it was a bit rough around the edges at parts, it's still an excellent throwback worth playing, and it's frequently on sale for just a couple bucks. Anyways, after the success of the original, a studio formed around Anodyne, and they began work on the sequel. After a successful and mostly positive release on PC last fall, Anodyne 2 Return to Dust hits the Switch this Thursday for $19.99. Anodyne 2 is quite the interesting game, and I think a lot of Nindy Nation citizens are going to like it. It's the story of two games, really. Set in a dreamlike, slightly unsettling world, you now explore in 3D, uncovering new areas, traversing the land while meeting new characters, and then you meet some characters who are corrupted, and that's where the game gets really interesting. After a quick mini-game, you dive into the mind of the corrupted character and are thrown into a mini-dungeon that goes back to the 2D top-down style of the original. Each of these mini-dungeons has unique mechanics and are a mix of combat and puzzle-solving, almost like the shrines in Breath of the Wild, but in more of a style to link to the past or the Oracle games. There's a lot to unpack with Anodyne 2, but its mix of 32-bit PlayStation-era exploration and action-adventure gameplay from the 16-bit era is quite impressive. It's not going to be for everyone, so you might want to look into it a bit more on your own, but if you like what you've seen so far, Anodyne 2 has about 10 hours of surreal, generation-blending gameplay waiting for you. And if that wasn't enough, here comes another solid experience of a completely different variety. Astrologaster is a comedic, narrative-driven game by Nyam Yam and Plugin Digital about an unlicensed medical doctor and astrologer named Simon Foreman. Set in Shakespeare's late 1500s London, you'll help Simon obtain his medical license as he works with 13 clients to cure what ails them. They'll visit you multiple times throughout the story, bring you their troubles, and you'll read the stars to provide direction, and then see how it all pans out. As such, Astrologaster is entirely driven by the choices you make, giving it built-in replay value on top of a reasonable $10 asking price. And the Monty Python-style humor should help encourage you to see everything that this quirky little game has to offer. But that's not all there is in this week's Big Thursday drop. Those aren't even the only great options available on Thursday, either. We've got a couple of big speed bumps coming on this highway of quality, and we need to roll over them before getting to our next destination. Dolores Entertainment is releasing Blackjack World Tour, but just as they forgot to list a price for the game, it's safe to assume that that level of quality control extends to their title as well. And if that wasn't a speed bump, Alignment Sharp delivers what can only be a rocket directly to the pillars holding up the bridge on this metaphorical highway of indie games when they release the sequel to one of the worst games we've ever covered on Nindy Nation. Cape's escape game, Second Room, is quite literally just a bunch of still images from living room renderings that would be used in videos from the 90s illustrating the power of Windows 95. 
You click on things while a JPEG of a ghost rambles in a language that is so supremely broken, it seems likely that it was automatically generated by a cat walking across a keyboard. That one costs $4.90. But speaking of highways, thankfully, we're about to put the pedal to the metal with the latest release and first Switch port by developers GameChuck as they debut on the platform with speed limit for $9.99. Speed Limit is best explained in two ways. One, it's an homage to some of the most iconic action movie tropes of all time, while also being, two, a quick-fire homage to iconic retro game action sequences. I will say that this game and developer is largely unknown to us, so let's wait for reviews or to see if I can grab a copy for Nindies at Night, but from what I can see, Speed Limit looks awesome. You're a dude on the run from a bunch of bad guys in a game that is fast, hard, and constantly changing. In one scene, you're in a side-scrolling running gun through a moving train, then the next, you're on top of a speeding train running from the hail of gunfire from a helicopter, before jumping off the train into a sports car where you drive in a top-down arcade racer, before leaping onto a motorcycle to shift into a behind-the-bike arcade racer flying through the tunnels. You end up jumping out of an airplane and skydiving your way through the clouds on your way down. I really hope this game is as cool as it looks. Again, it claims to be very hard and unforgiving, with gameplay that changes as soon as you master one mechanic, so it's apparently one of those non-stop, die-retry action games, just with mixing elements from all types of them. I also don't know how long this is or if there's much replay value, but either way, I'm very excited to try Speed Limit and will do my best to nab a copy for this week's Nindies at Night. And we've got even another Nindy newcomer this week with three-legged eggs acrobatic platformer Glam for $19.99. At first glance, it looks like Celeste, but in the world of the OMG Dolls toys. If you don't have an elementary school-aged daughter, you might not understand that reference. But the gameplay looks great nonetheless. You work your way through handcrafted levels, and your wall jumping is aided by a grappling hook of sorts, so you'll be flinging yourself around the levels too. The pixel art is vibrant and easy to read as you navigate the challenge rooms, and if nothing else, it includes a two-player mode with challenges that really look like fun. There's over 200 levels across 11 chapters, and the multiplayer mode alone packs another 60, so there's a lot there. I'll be watching for reviews, but Glam looks like a title worth considering if you're itching to get back to some of that challenge room style platforming. I might get in trouble for this next one, so I'll be clear that I have no proof for what I'm about to say, but Fun Alter Games' new puzzle platformer Crazy Oche kinda rubs me the wrong way. Sure, it's similar to Glam with the super hard challenge rooms and all, but this one has more puzzle versus Glam's fast action. But here's the thing. To me, it actually looks identical to Schmoobity Boo, which was a very fun, fairly unique in appearance puzzle platformer that released last fall. Crazy Oche is six bucks and seems to be created by a solo developer named Garen, but I don't know. It just looks so similar to Schmoobity Boo that even if it isn't some kind of asset flip, even if it is truly a unique creation made by someone living in a vacuum, it still seems weird, you know? And the last release for this week's Big Thursday Drop is King of Seeds by 3D Clouds for $24.99. It's a naval combat game set in a procedurally generated world that uses RPG mechanics for fleet upgrades in between the ship-to-ship -ship combat. Sadly, there are no roguelike mechanics, so it's only two-thirds of an indie trifecta. The visuals are nice and cartoony, and the systems look deep enough to get lost in, but this is yet another genre that is becoming increasingly crowded, so I'd suggest throwing this one on your wish list if it is indeed a pirate's life for you. Rounding out the week on Friday the 19th are five new indies, but the first is at the top of the list for Wait, isn't that one already on the Switch? Thomas Was Alone is a very early indie darling that released way back in 2012 by developer Mike Bithell, who has since gone on to create games like Volume and the recent John Wick Hex. It's, at first, an extremely simple side-scrolling platformer about a rectangle separated from its friends. However, pretty quickly, you start meeting up with other shapes, and as a surprisingly deep story is told via voiceover, the platforms begin turning into increasingly complex puzzles that will have your brain in mush by the end. Thomas Was Alone is an early example of an indie masterpiece. That much is hard to argue. 
but I fear the things that it does really well may not resonate with new players in 2021 the way they did a decade ago. There is a lovely story told within, the procedurally generated soundtrack is still impressive, and the gameplay remains tight as ever, but for better and worse, we've seen this formula built upon many times over the past nine or so years. If you have played this game before though, I think it's an easy recommendation, because Mike Bithell has gone back and recorded a director's commentary track over the game's entire four-hour runtime. It's a really cool way to go back and experience this game all over again. I don't often or ever assign homework, but Thomas Was Alone includes a demo on the eShop that I think everyone should check out. If you're new to the game, you just might see what made this game such a star two console generations ago. If you do, or if you're ready to revisit this expertly crafted experience, Thomas Was Alone launches on sale with a 20% discount for $7.99, and alongside Cathedral is Nindy Nation's Pick of the Week. Developer Big Bread partners with Chili Dog Interactive, oh, they made food, to bring a run-and-gun platformer to the eShop this week with Boom Blaster for $4.99. Playing as one of three inmates, you escape from a hellish sci-fi prison and make your way to freedom as all sorts of bugs, robots, and bug robots try to stop you. You should expect a traditional linear experience with lots of weapons, big nasty bosses, and a decent challenge, all under the veil of a $5 budget title. And if your expectations are set right, you should set yourself up for a pretty good time. Pig Farts is selling a 25-year-old demo of a rejected Micro Machines game called Off-Road Mini Racing for $4.49, so check that out if you get bored of drinking kerosene to see if it turns your urine flammable. Ugh, I probably need to say don't do that, don't I? Okay, don't do that, don't drink kerosene, and especially don't buy the game by Pig Farts. One of the more impressive WTFs we've had in a while is Puss by Team Coil and Samastai for $9.59. This is clearly only meant to be played on drugs. It's one of those get-to-the-goal-without-touching-anything games, but it's just a hardcore cat-laced acid trip with more distorted screams and warped cat memes than you'd see if you accidentally summoned Satan while worshipping Nyan Cat. This game is almost certainly developed solely to get attention from streamers and YouTubers so people buy it, and I would assume that once anyone sits down to play it, they don't find much beyond just the WTF factor. If it was ridiculous WTF, I'd probably give it a shot, but it's more of the disturbing WTF, you know, the kind that makes you realize you took a wrong turn when you're exploring an internet rabbit hole, so no thanks. We wrap up this week's new releases with Doom and Destiny Advanced. It's a game made by a team that clearly knows their audience. Heartbit crafted a 16-bit RPG about four nerds who get sucked into their D&D game and play their tropes to their heart's content. Tons of top-down worlds to explore, combat that should feel familiar to classic Final Fantasy fans, and over 30 hours of main story with more than double that in the optional quests. It's all light-hearted with jokes that might seem a bit heavy-handed, but should land with the right audience. And to add even more bang for your buck, there's an online battle mode, too. It's a well-rounded package that has a lot to offer for that cross-section of D&D and JRPG fans, and Doom and Destiny Advanced will be available at the end of the week for $11.99. There's some weird stuff out there this week, but there's some easy recommendations too. I'll be anxiously awaiting Cathedral, and I'm looking forward to playing some Thomas Was Alone again after all these years. Astrologer looks like a great mood lifter, and Romantic Distancing looks heartwarming to boot, but it's Anodyne 2 that I'm the most curious about this week. What about you? Sound off in the YouTube comments to let us know what you're picking up or what you're adding to your wish list this week. Now there's a lot of great games this week alone, but the deals? <laughs> The deals might be even better. I am so happy with the list this week, not only with the selection of the games themselves, but with the breadth of the selection as well. There's really something for everyone. Anyways, without further ado, with 582 games currently discounted on the eShop, these are our picks for the 11 Nindies on sale at their lowest prices ever through at least February 20th. Well, they're all on sale through at least February 20th, except these first three. But they're all really good and I wanted to include them. They all expire on the 18th, so just act fast. 
First up is Graceful Explosion Machine, one of the games on my Switch with the most frequent playtime since the Switch's launch itself. It's an arcade-style shooter similar to Defender and is just an absolute gem, which is fitting because that's actually the acronym for the game itself. Everyone should check out Graceful Explosion Machine, and this week it's half off for $6.49. If it's a Metroidvania you're after, look no further than The Depths of the Ocean with Shinseki Into the Depths, an Apple Arcade port that hit Switch last summer and seemed to go under the radar. It's beautiful to look at and with the Switch's controller is the definitive version of the game. Sometimes you're exploring on foot while tethered to your sub, and sometimes you're piloting the sub itself, but Shinseki is a AAA quality Metroid-like through and through. And until the 18th, it's 25% off for $14.99. If you've got an hour and three bucks to kill, Florence is a great way to spend both. It's an interactive story about love and relationships and is, frankly, one of the best told stories I've seen that clocks in at about 45 minutes. It's a mix of whimsical minigames and storytelling and, if anything, is almost like the video game equivalent of the movie 500 Days of Summer. Now, on to the rest of these games which are all otherwise available until at least next week's episode. Hunt Down is one of the tightest side-scrolling action games I have ever played, and it's one of the better indies that released in 2020. It's rarely on sale, so now's the time to get it if you love 80s cyberpunk and sci-fi. It's almost entirely just running from left to right and timing your various weapons, dodges, and a little platforming, but it is polished to the nines. At 40% off and bringing at least six hours of content, Hunt Down is easily worth $11.99. If you're looking for some fantasy, or maybe a bit more platforming, or especially if you have one to three other people to play a game with, Unruly Heroes is one of the highest quality games that didn't get enough attention when it released in early 2019. In some ways, it's very similar to the Rayman Origins and Legends games in terms of platforming, but it has a lot more puzzle elements, and the other half of the game is very much a combo-driven action game with four different characters to play as. You'll either play with friends or swap between characters on the fly during the campaign, and it's excellent regardless of how you play it. It's funny, it's smart, it looks gorgeous, and right now, Unruly Heroes is 42% off for just $11.59. The Odd World series is back, and the ground-up remake of the original Abe's Odyssey is the perfect place to start. Oddworld New and Tasty is one of the original modern puzzle platformers, and it's about as good as they come. It uses cinematic platforming similar to the old Prince of Persia games, combined with a call-and-response system you'll use with other Oddworld inhabitants to help you solve puzzles. Oh, and there's also a button that makes you fart, <laughs> so there's that too. You'll get about 8 hours out of this excellent title, and while it's half off for 15 bucks, it's a great value. A few months back on Nindies at Night, we played a bunch of games by Bertel Horberg, and this week, two of them are on sale. Super Punch Patrol is a simple but refined side-scrolling brawler that is half off for $2.49. It's pretty tough, so be ready for a challenge, and the hand-drawn visuals are strong enough to almost justify the purchase alone. The other title by Horberg Productions is Mech Termination Force, and it's a much larger affair. If you're familiar with the game, think of it as a 2D Shadow of the Colossus. For the most part, your job is to scale massive boss enemies and figure out how to take them down by memorizing their patterns and shooting their weak spots. Each enemy you face is a puzzle, and each battle is extremely satisfying. I really love this game, and if you want to see more of it before dropping $5.99, go check out our Nindies at Night for Super Punch Patrol and Mech Extermination Force over on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel. For some addictive, pick-up-and-play arcade skating action, look no further than Ollie Ollie. It's a side-scrolling skateboarding game that is all about perfectly timed button presses, landing every move, and racking up insane combos. Ollie Ollie Switch Stance is exclusive to the Switch and is the definitive edition of the game, including both the original and its excellent sequel. If this game is up your alley, it's easily the best deal of this week, as there is a ton of content in this package, and the whole thing is 80% off for just $2.99. But the highest rated game in this week's deals list is one that I've recommended a dozen times before, and I'll keep doing so until everyone has played Velocity 2X. 
This game is half vertically scrolling shooter and half side scrolling run and gun, all tied together in a super slick sci-fi aesthetic and deep progression mechanics. This package includes a bunch of added DLC and the daily challenges are still going. There's really nothing else out there like Velocity 2X, even five years after its original PlayStation Vita release. Go buy Velocity 2X while it's 75% off for $4.99. It's five bucks, take a chance. Trust me on this one. And finally, you noticed, I noticed, we all noticed, there were no Nindy trifectas this week. So I am very pleased to say we're rounding out this week's deals with one of my favorites. Released at the end of 2019, Black Future 88 is a side-scrolling action, uh, platformer, shooter, it's a lot of things, and all of them are really good. You're encouraged to move fast as you scale a tower, and along the way you'll enhance your abilities, gain permanent upgrades, and even unlock multiple new characters that all play completely differently. Black Future 88 was developed by a musician, and as such, has one of the best cyberpunk-themed soundtracks out there, and the game is currently half off for 10 bucks. Pick it up and settle in for a hearty dose of procedurally generated worlds, roguelike mechanics, and RPG elements! That, my friends, was one of my favorite deals lists we've had in months. Every single one of those games stands among the best in its genre, and most of them have not received the love they deserve. Consider your investment in these games as you doing your part to keep the indie scene alive, and let me know what you're picking up. Hit up the YouTube comments to let me know what you're checking out this week. Head on over to Twitter at Nindy Nation and let's talk about the week's indie news as it happens. And if you want to hang out with like-minded indie fans who are up for chatting any time of day, come join the Nindy Nation Discord server. The link is in this episode's YouTube description. Speaking of the YouTube channels, new episodes go live every Tuesday afternoon, but if you'd rather listen to the episode, our friends at the Nintendo Village host an audio podcast feed as well. They've been great to Nindy Nation, so if you're looking for anything else Nintendo related, head on over to their YouTube channel or check out all of their content at the nintendovillage.com. This was a great week. Awesome deals, multiple solid new releases, and we even had a couple of good picks in the neglected Nindies. Who knew? Coming up on episode 104, we've got a game that'll make you depressed, a game that'll make you tingly in the nether regions, and a game that I'm pretty sure is just Crazy Taxi with a slightly different name. But that's for next week, and we're all done here. Thanks for stopping by today, citizens. Until next time, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 103. And remember, no matter what type of game you're looking for, Nindy Nation will be right here to help you find just the thing to keep your Joy-Cons synced. <laughs>